hello everyone welcome back to my channel i know it has been a while um my name is azarae bellamy i am the founder of blondery we make and ship blondies nationwide well actually we just started shipping to the uk so we we can say we ship globally now i think um today i'm going to be talking about shipping perishables and the do's and don'ts of that if you're not familiar with my channel i help food businesses get their products out into the marketplace, but I am sure some of my advice can be applied to a variety of industries. So be sure to like, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned. Okay, so you guys know I am not a fan of super long videos, so let's make this quick, easy, and simple. Um, I have my notes here. Do test your product before, um, test freezing your product before shipping it. So this was something that I um, definitely did with the blondies and I try to do it with every new flavor I come out with. As you become more familiar with your product, you'll know that if you add a certain thing or if you use a certain technique, it may not ship as well so you know that you can't ship it. Um, but definitely freeze your product and see if it can withstand freezing. So if it's a meringue, probably can't withstand freezing, right? Um, can you freeze marshmallows? <laughs> I don't know if you can freeze marshmallows. Um, I don't know. Not important. What is important is that you take the time, freeze your product, see how it withstands freezing. That's going to be very important. What you shouldn't do is try to ship your product at room temp. And this goes more so for... Um, perishable things so obviously if you're shipping chocolates you probably don't you probably can't freeze your chocolate and then ship it um but brownies cookies cakes um bars uh bread all of those things you should probably try to freeze it before you ship it um freezing helps to preserve shelf life and that is something you're going to be fighting against so Blondery ships highly perishable, super high-end baked goods around the country. And when I say that out loud, I am confronted with the simple fact that what I'm doing may seem impossible to others. But we're getting the hang of it. Another thing you may want to do is to order small quantities of your packaging on Amazon or any of the third party or first party websites. I would not recommend buying custom packaging until you are two to three years into your operations and you understand um, how your product ships and how um, and the sizes that you need. So do not order custom packaging right away. Order small quantities of different sizes to see how it fits. So with Blondery, we have um, the box that the Blondies go in. Let me get it. I'm back. So we have the main box that the Blondies go in. This is the main box. Then we have the master box, is what I've been calling it. Um, and this is the box that gets shipped. So this is vacuum sealed and then it goes inside of this. Um, the reason why I'm actually making this video is because we went through a lot this summer <laughs> with shipping because I had never shipped in mass quantities during the summer. So there was a lot of adjustments that I needed to make. And one of them was um, insulation. So the quickest and easiest thing I found that works well for my product is to make my product, get it into the box, vacuum seal it, freeze it as soon as possible. On the day of shipment, we put it in one of these insulated mailers. Amazon sent me these that are like super crumpled up. It's the first time I've ever done this, so no hard feelings. Um, I put it in this and then I have a ice pack 
let me get the ice pack. I'm back with the ice pack. So this is the ice pack that we use. I prefer to use the Nordic Ice brand. Ooh. Is it gonna focus? I don't know. Um, I prefer to use the Nordic Ice brand of ice pack that is the no sweat. So it has like this kind of fur. I'm sure it's not fur, but it feels like fur um, on the outside so that when you freeze it and then you take it out and you put it in the insulated um, envelope, it is not dripping condensation all over your product. And this has worked really well. They're a little bit more expensive than the no, than the sweating kind, but I feel like it's worth the investment so that my product arrives in the best shape possible. If you don't want to spend the money on the extra or you cannot find um, the no sweat, you could also wrap. You can get some butcher paper <clears throat> and cut off pieces and wrap the ice pack in butcher paper before putting it into your packaging. Now, it's important, like, you wanna have your product look the best it can before it even gets to shipping, right? So, you can't expect your product to look exactly the same when it arrives to your customer. You wanna get it as close as possible but it's gonna get shaken up. <laughs> like it's just, you can put all the fragile stickers, everything you want, it's going to get shaken up. So you wanna pack it as tightly as possible, but when I think about packaging, I always think of Steve Jobs saying that he considers the end user and his customer when they're opening up the box. Therefore, if you've ever opened an Apple box, you see it opens very seamlessly and the packaging is not hard to find, it's easily accessible, it's not like you're ripping and tearing and pulling apart plastic, right? So <clears throat> you wanna keep that in mind, um, even when you're packing very tightly, as I say. I say to pack tightly because you don't, your product is going to shift during shipment. I have had to um, recognize that once the product leaves my hands, there is nothing I can do and my job is to make sure that the product is in the best shape possible before it leaves my facility. So some of the precautions I've been taking in the dead of summer in New York City have been the ice packs and getting the latest pickup time I can. So I've noticed that when I schedule my pickups for FedEx, I wait until 12 p.m. to schedule it. Otherwise, if I schedule it the day before or early in the morning, they're going to come as soon as possible. And they're usually going to leave it on the truck while they go and pick up other shipments, right? So I like to schedule it at 12. They, then that means they'll usually come around 2 and then um, they'll go and pick up, I guess, everything else and then take it to the airport. The thing I love about FedEx is that everything goes to the airport, at least for, for Express. I don't know about for ground, but for FedEx Express, everything is routed to go to an airport. Um, one time, <laughs> one time I had to drive all the way to Newark um, to drop off packages. It was for a huge Netflix order. It was very last minute. Um, I drove all the way to Newark because the last cutoff time I think was 10 p.m. And I was like, why does this one have a 10 p.m. cutoff time for Express when all of the other locations in my area have an 8 p.m. or like 8.45 cutoff time? And it's because, I didn't realize it until I got there, I was actually taking it to the airport. Um, so that definitely helps if you're located near an airport and you're using FedEx or even really all of the carriers, I believe this should be the same, but if you're using FedEx, it helps to know where your nearest airport is and maybe you can drive it there yourself if that's feasible or just get the latest pickup time possible. That was kind of a tangent, but I felt like it was good to know. Um, definitely test sending your product in different seasons. 
So like I said, a lot of our struggle this summer has been because I had never shipped my product in 90 to 100 degree weather. Um, we quickly figured it out, hence the ice packs and insulated envelopes. But to save you some time, ship it in the summer, ship it in the fall, ship it in the winter, ship it in the spring. And I usually just ship, since I'm in New York, I usually just ship my packages to my parents who are in California. But I'm now seeing I need a contact in Texas and somewhere in the South as well that I can ship my products to to ensure that they arrive in the best condition possible. So another thing I just want to mention is that you really don't have to reinvent the wheel here. I firmly encourage thinking outside the box. That's where innovation comes in. But while you're getting started, please don't try to reinvent the wheel. Uline makes insulated boxes. One of my assistants sent me a video of a girl who was, I guess, got one of the post bo post office flat rate boxes and some styrofoam and was building an insulated box. While that may be ingenious because then you can get the flat rate pricing, right? It's still like, what's your time worth, right? So if you're only shipping maybe five packages a week, maybe that's sustainable. But when you're shipping hundreds of packages a week, are you really going to be building insulated flat rate mailing boxes, I would think that you're better off charging your customer for the extra packaging it takes for you to buy a Uline insulated box. And by all means, Uline, Amazon, these are not my ideal places to buy from. Um, however, when you, when you can buy in bulk, then that's when you can choose who you can buy from, right? Um, so yeah, I think like, Definitely when you're considering all of your packaging, consider what your time is worth and consider like how are you going to scale? Assuming you want to scale your business. I'm, I'm hoping that you want your business to grow and thrive. So assuming you want to scale, is it feasible for you to build an insulated box? Is it feasible, Azareas, for you to vacuum seal <laughs> every single box? Is it feasible, Azareas, for you to tie ribbon around every single box? I, I hope um, someone who's known me from the beginning watches this video and comments below. Do you remember when I was tying ribbon around each box? <laughs> that, like, everyone, every, I thought it was going to be a forever thing because everyone loved it. I'm like, this is going to be, you know, something that I can do forever. And I'm not saying that it, it wasn't. I just think that like for where I'm headed, we've already made the decision, but for where I'm headed, it's a better investment for me to get belly bands, which is like um, something you slide over the box and it's like printed and it's nice. So we've already made that investment, but it, it was a, because then I can put information on it. The ribbon doesn't do anything besides look pretty. Um, but the, does my customer value the information or do they value the prettiness of it? And it doesn't mean that the belly band can't be pretty, right? So I think that, I mean, not to say we'll never put a ribbon around anything, but I was cutting the ribbon, wrapping it around, vacuum sealing, and I think like sometimes you have to pick your battles and only you as the entrepreneur will know what feels right for your brand. So don't let anyone tell you what decision you should make. People told me like, you should leave the ribbon or they told me I shouldn't. And people are going to say all of those things, but only you know where your brand needs to be in the marketplace. And that starts with your packaging. So I hope that this video is helpful. I hope that you guys um, continue to chase your dreams and continue to put your authentic selves out there. If you need me, you can find me at Blondry. Shoot me an email at hello at Blondry. And um, I'm, I'm here to help. I'm happy to help. Just uh, let me know what else you guys want to see from me. Toodles.